next example of linear dependent and independent types show that e raised to x cos x sin x are linearly independent in function space that let k1 uh, so we have to determine th these three vectors are linearly independent we have to show the these three vectors are linearly independent so uh, there are three vectors so take three scalars let k1 k2 k3 be scalar such that k1 e raised to x plus k2 cos x plus k3 sin x is equal to zero the zero means the zero function then put x is equal to zero uh, x is equal to pi by 2 and x is equal to pi we get so this is uh, some uh, what uh, different example uh, of the remaining uh, linearly dependent independent examples this is some different example we have to uh, obtain the three equations in order to obtain the three equations we have to put x is equal to 0 pi by 2 and pi we get this e raised to uh, 0 is 1 cos uh, 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0 so we have k1 plus k2 is equal to 0 equation number 1 then substitute x is equal to pi by 2 e so k1 e raised to pi by 2 uh, cos pi by 2 is 0 so sin pi by 2 is 1 so plus k3 is equal to 0 and e raised to pi k1 e raised to pi and cos pi is minus 1 so minus k2 and sin pi is 0 so we have is equal to 0 so these are the equation number 1 2 3 and the, we have to solve these three equations and we have to determine the values of k1 k2 k3 Either I use the Gauss elimination method or by using trial and error. That is by adding and subtracting we have this. So uh, from equation 1, we have k1 is minus k2. Put in the equation number 3. Or we add the equation number 1 and 3. Just add equation 1 and 3. We have k1 plus k1 e raised to pi is equal to 0. So uh, or we take k1 as minus k2 in this equation we have this minus k2 e raised to pi minus k2 is equal to 0 so k2 take k2 as common minus k2 as common e raised to pi plus 1 is equal to 0 and so we have minus k1 k2 is equal to 0 because e raised to pi plus 1 is not equal to 0 quantity so the multiplication of these two is 0 means one of them is 0 and so k2 is 0 we know that a into b is 0 then either a is 0 or b is 0 one of them is 0 so here e raised to pi plus 1 is not equal to 0 for all value of pi uh, for all uh, e raised to pi is not equal to 0 e raised to pi plus 1 is not equal to 0 so this e raised to pi is always not equal to 0 quantity so we have it is my uh, minus k2 is 0 means k2 is 0 and substitute k2 as 0 we have k1 is 0 from equation number 1 and if we substitute k1 as 0 in equation number 2 we have k3 is 0 so all these k1, k2, k3 are 0 and therefore the given three vectors are linearly independent. So this is the some different problem on the linear dependent and independent. That is why I have to find the three equations by substituting x is equal to 0, pi by 2 and pi. So the given three vectors are linearly independent because we have the values of all scalars are equal to 0. Next example, determine whether the set of vectors P1 is equal to 5, P2 is minus 6 plus, minus 6 plus uh, 4x square, 6x plus x square, P3 is 3 minus x bracket square, are linearly independent in P2. What is this P2? P2 is the vector space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n with real entries in x. So these P1, P2, P3 are the elements of this obviously P2 because all these P1, P2, P3 are what? are polynomials of degree either is equal to 1 uh, is equal to 2 or less than or equal to 2. So this uh, polynomial P1 is a uh, polynomial of degree 0. This P2 is the polynomial of degree 2. This P3 is the polynomial of degree 2. After simplification of these 3 minus x bracket square we have this. So all these uh, P1, P2, P3 are what? Are polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2. So this P1, P2, P3 are the elements of P2 and we have to determine whether these three vectors p1 p2 p3 are linearly dependent or linearly independent so there are three vectors so take three scalars let k1 k2 k3 be scalar such that k1 p1 plus k2 p2 plus k3 p3 is equal to 0 so uh, after all these examples of linearly dependent and independent what is your observation that is these vectors either uh, we are in uh, P2, that is set of polynomials, or in the function, or in, in the R3, or R4, or M2 by 2R, uh, whatever may be the vector space, 
if you have to determine the elements of that vector space are linearly dependent or independent what we have to uh, do that just take the scalars how many we have to take the scalars if you are given the three vectors then take k1 k2 k3 as, uh, as the three scalars or if there are uh, if you are given the four vectors uh, then we take the four scalars and take their linear combination equal to zero that is k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 plus k4 v4 is equal to zero or uh, if there are three vectors then k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 is equal to zero and find the values of k1 k2 k3 k4 that is the values of that scalars if values of all the scalars are equal to zero then the given vectors are linearly independent and if the values of k1 k2 k k3 k4 that is all the scalars are not equal to zero then the given vectors are linearly dependent so uh, the procedure for all vector spaces uh, for all problems of linearly dependent and independent are same that is uh, uh, either the vector space uh, is a vector space of polynomials or vector space of uh, uh, matrices or vector space of functions here we to observe this example this these are the examples of r3 r4 or the vector space may be the set of matrix m2 by 2r so uh, the vectors are vector space may be m2 by 2r or uh, r3 or r4 or p2 that is the set of all polynomials of degree 2 or less than or equal to 2 so this this is these are the elements of m2 by 2r so procedure for all examples is same so if we are given three vectors take three scalars if we are given four vectors take four scalars and find the values of that scalars okay if all are equal to zero then set is linearly dependent independent and if one of them is not equal to zero then set is linearly dependent so here the same procedure here the three uh, three uh, elements of uh, uh, this capital p2 are given what are that p1 p2 p3 and then take the three scalars so first sentence is let k1 k2 k3 be scalar such that k1 p1 plus k2 p2 plus k3 p3 is equal to zero bar what is this zero bar this zero bar is the zero vector of this p2 and what is the zero vector of p2 zero plus zero x plus zero x square that is the uh, polynomial of degree 2 with uh, uh, coefficients at zero so this is the zero bar of this p2 and uh, substitute p1 p2 and p3 and then apply the definition of scalar multiplication and uh, addition we have this that is collect the coefficient constant coefficient in one bracket the coefficient of x the coefficient of x and the coefficient of x square so is equal to 0 plus 0 x plus 0 x square and after comparing lhs and rhs we have 5 k1 plus 9 k3 is equal to 0 then uh, the coefficient of x in lhs is minus 6 k2 minus 6 k3 is equal to 0 and the coefficient of x square is k2 plus k3 is equal to 0. So we have the three equations and three unknowns. So we have to solve this system and we have to find the values of k1, k2, k3. So form the admitted matrix. So the coefficient of k1 is 5, k2 is 0, k3 is 9 is equal to 0. Then minus uh, k2, coefficient of k2 is 0, uh, k1 is 0, k2 is minus 6, k3 is minus 6 is equal to 0. Then uh, the coefficient of k1 is 0, k2 is 1, k3 is 1. A zero and then we have to reduce this augmented matrix uh, to echelon four so we have to reduce this five to one so one by five r1 is the application we have this matrix this first row as it's uh, the second row and third row as it is then we have to reduce this uh, two eleven to zero already the, these two elements are zero so we have to reduce this minus six to one so one by six minus one by six r2 is the application so we have one 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 and this uh, the first row and third row as it is. Then we have to reduce this element to zero. So R2, R3 minus R2 is the application. R3 minus R2. So we have all the elements are equal to zero in the last row. And so this is the uh, echelon four. So we have to uh, write the rank of A and rank of AB both are two. Rank of A is two and rank of AB is also two. So this system is consistent. And we know that in the case of the system is homogeneous this system is homogeneous so in this case the rank of a and rank of ab both are same always same because the homogeneous system is always consistent 
okay and so but uh, what is the rank of a and rank of ab these these this these two are equal to 2 and this is strictly less than number of unknowns what do we have that the number uh, rank of a is equal to rank of ab is equal to 2 and is strictly less than number of unknowns because number of unknowns are 3 and so this system has non trivial solution this system has infinitely many solutions so one of the solution of this system is k1 is 0 k2 is 0 k3 is 0 but other than this solution this system has another solutions so in case of homogeneous system so in case of homogeneous or non homogeneous system uh, the system has infinitely many solutions if the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is strictly less than number of unknowns so in case of homogeneous system if the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is strictly than less than number of unknowns then system has non trivial solution that is then k1 k2 k3 are not all equal to zero so if the rank of if we, are, we if we have the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is equal to 3 then all these k1 k2 k3 are equal to zero so remember these things we have to use these things in the next theorem that is if the system is consistent the uh, homogeneous system is always consistent but if the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is strictly less than number of unknowns in that case the system has non trivial solutions means the system has non zero solution means the values of k1 k2 k3 are uh, the, the values of unknowns are not all zero so when the k in in, in what case the number of uh, the no, no, no the scalars has uh, non zero values that is if when the uh, all the scalars are not equal to zero if the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is strictly less than number of unknowns in that case the system has non zero solution non trivial solution the homogeneous system has non zero solutions means the values of all constants k1 k2 k3 or unknowns are not all zero but if the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is equal to number of unknowns in that case the homogeneous system has only zero solution that is the values of all the unknowns k1 k2 k3 k4 r are equal to zero so remember this thing here we have the rank of a is 2 and rank of ab is 2 and it is strictly less than number of unknowns because number of unknowns are 3 and so this system has non trivial solution non zero solution that is k1 k2 k3 are not all zero so how we can find we re rewrite the equation we have k1 plus 9 by 5 k3 is equal to 0 and k2 plus k3 is equal to 0 so there are three unknowns and there are two equations two unknowns and three unknowns in this uh, system there are two equations and three unknowns so assign one unknown what is the difference between three and two is one so assign one unknown so assign k3 or k2 as t or r use notation r t s any so what is this t t is any real number so suppose k3 is t and therefore k2 is minus t and k1 from equation one is a nine by five t okay uh, minus nine by five k3 k3 is minus t so we have k1 is 9 by 5 t so this t belongs to r t is any real number and hence uh, this k1 k2 k3 what is your observation k1 k2 k3 are not all zero because if you take t as one then we have k3 is one k2 is minus one and k3 k1 is 9 by 5 so this k1 k2 k k3 are not all zero so these are uh, equal to zero if t is equal to zero but uh, uh, t is any real number so take t as any non zero number then we have k3 k, k1 all these k1 k2 k3 are not equal to zero so uh, and therefore p1 p2 p3 are linearly dependent are linearly dependent so what is your uh, last sentence p1 p2 p3 are linearly dependent because k1 k2 k3 are not all zero so when the system the system has non zero solution when all the unknowns are not equal to zero if the rank of a is equal to rank of ab is strictly less than number of unknowns and if rank of a is equal to rank of ab is equal to number of unknowns in that case the system has 
zero solution that is the values of unknowns all unknowns are equal to zero so i have to use this uh, in the next theorem this thing in the next theorem this concept in the next theorem so let s be the set of two or more vectors from vector space v that is s is the set of uh, two or more vectors from v that vector space v then prove that s is linearly dependent if and only at least one of the vector in s is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vectors in s so l dot c dot means linear combination l dot d dot means linearly dependent so an l dot i n d dot l dot i n d dot means linearly independent so these are the short uh, short form uh, to use the linear combination linearly dependent linearly independent and v dot sp dot means vector space so what is the theorem let s be the set of two or more vectors from v vector space v then prove that s is linearly dependent if and only at least one of the vector in s is expressible as linear combination of the rest of the vector in s so uh, this is the if and only type theorem so we have to prove this theorem in two parts so first let s is equal to v1 v2 vr uh, let take s as a set of more than two vectors so obviously this r is what greater than or equal to 2 that is this set s contains two or more than two vectors v1 v2 vr obviously this v1 v2 vr are the vectors from vector space v be the set of vectors from uh, vectors from vector space v okay so this is one of the subset of this vector space v contains uh, more than two or more than two vectors okay and now we have to prove the theorem in two parts first part assume that s is linearly dependent we assume this s is linearly dependent and now what what we have to show we have to prove at least one of the vector in s uh, that is out of this r at least one of them is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vector in s or the remaining vector in s so uh this way this set is linearly dependent and then what is by using definition there exist scalars k1 k2 kr not all zero that is at least one of them is not equal to zero such that k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 uh, plus dash 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 kr vr plus kr vr right remaining statement then uh, uh, k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 plus dash 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 kr vr is equal to 0 so write this complete sentence there exists a scalar k1 k2 kr not all zero such that k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 plus dash 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 plus kr vr is equal to 0 suppose ki is not equal to 0 i runs from 1 to r i i is what either less than or equal to r greater than or equal to 1 so assume that out of this k1 k2 kr ki is not equal to 0 the vector of ith number is not equal to uh, the scalar i number scalar that is ki is not equal to zero not all zero means one of them is not equal to zero we don't know what is which one is not equal to zero so i assume that ki is not equal to zero obviously a value of i is what either 1 2 or r out of this so i value of i is what 1 to r so uh, then we take that that ki remain that ki vi in the lhs from this equation we uh, remain Uh, k i v i in the lhs and shift all the remaining quantities to rhs so what is the, what are that minus k1 v1 minus k2 v2 in this way plus dash 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 the quantity minus k i minus 1 v i minus 1 that is the previous quantity of k i v i then uh, uh, the quantity after the k i v i is minus k i plus 1 v i plus 1 minus minus uh, dash 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 minus k r v i so complete this statement First k1 v1 plus k2 v2 uh, plus k3 v3 plus dash 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 kr vr. So the uh, uh, kr uh, remain the kr vi term in LHS and shift all the remaining terms to RHS. We have this, and then write this minus k1 v1 as as minus in bracket minus k1 v1. Similarly, this uh, minus uh, k2 write in bracket minus k2 v2, and in this way minus k i minus one v i minus one. Uh, then 
uh, similarly plus minus ki minus, uh, plus one in bracket vi plus one di dash, dash minus kr vr so uh, multiply by minus one by minus uh, one by minus one by ki because mm -hmm. ki is not equal to zero so multiply uh, throughout by one by ki that is divided by ki throughout so we have vi and this is minus k1 by k i v1 v1 uh, then minus k2 by k i v2 plus di dash, dash minus uh, k i minus 1 by k i v i minus 1 plus uh, minus k i plus 1 divided by k i v i plus 1 and this way plus di dash, dash minus k r divided by k i v r okay so after dividing by k i we have this and observe this minus k1 by ki minus k2 by ki this uh, all this up to minus kr by ki all these are scalars and therefore what is what is this expression uh, uh, what is the rhs of this expression the rhs of this expression is what is the linear combination of v1 v2 delta dash vi minus 1 vi plus 1 vr that is this is the linear combination of the vectors in S except VI. Okay, and so VI, so what do we have? VI is equal to this, means VI express as a linear combination of the vectors in S except VI or other than VI or rest of the vectors in S. So what do we have? That is this expression, this equation says that VI express as a linear combination of the rest of the vector seniors that is uh, v, other than vr there, this is what is rhs is the linear combination of vector seniors other than vr so vi express as a linear combination of the rest of the or, or remaining vectors of vector seniors so this is the part one now uh, so we say that one of the vector in s is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vector seniors now we have to prove the second part we assume that uh, assume that one of the vector in s say v1 is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vector seniors suppose v1 out of this uh, v1 v2 vn vr oh, we assume that v1 express as a linear combination of the rest of the vectors that is what is your observe uh, what is your assumption that is there exists scalars k2 k3 k kr such that v1 is equal to k2 v2 plus k3 v3 plus kr vr either right uh, these uh, bar at uh, the top of v1 v2 v3 v4 vr or uh, without bar so we assume that one of the vector in s yes, suppose v1 is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vectors in s yes. that is there exists scalars k2 k3 kr such that v1 is equal to k2 v2 plus k3 v3 plus kr vr means v1 is expressed as a linear combination of rest of the vectors v2 v3 vr and then uh, uh, we shift this uh, uh, v1 to rhs it becomes minus v1 and write minus v1 as minus 1 into v1 so the remaining vectors are plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 plus kr vr is equal to 0 so lhs we have after shifting this v1 to rhs we have is equal to zero in LHS and after interchanging the sides we have this and this is the this if you observe this uh, LHS of this above this uh, equation so what is the LHS is the linear combination of v1 v2 vr and is equal to zero but these uh, uh, coefficients of v1 v2 vr are not all zero because we are not guarantee about this k2 k3 kr are not equal to zero or equal to zero but this minus one is not equal to zero so what is this this equation satisfies with scalars so this is the this satisfies with the scalars minus one comma k2 k3 kr and these scalars are not all zero because uh, this minus one is not equal to zero uh, this k2 k3 k r suppose this k2 k3 kr all are equal to zero but this minus one is not equal to zero so these all these scalars are not equal to zero so these scalars are not all zero and so set s is linearly dependent because we have the scalars not all zero but the their scale linear combination is equal to zero and therefore by using the definition uh, if the all scalars are not all zero then set is linearly dependent 
so the set yes is linearly dependent and that is why to prove in second part we have to prove yes is linearly dependent and hence the theorem that is uh, if the if the set is a uh, yes is linearly dependent uh, then at least one of them in s is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vectors in s so its equivalence statement is what the equivalence statement of this statement is what uh, the set if s is set of or uh, two vectors or more vectors two or more vectors in uh, from the vector space v then then uh, the s is linearly independent what is the its equivalence statement s is linearly independent if and only if at least or there exist its uh, negation is for all so s is linearly independent if and only if no vector in s is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vectors in s so what is the equivalence statement of this statement that s is linearly independent if and only if no vector in s is expressible as a linear combination of the rest of the vectors in s so it is the equivalence statement of this statement if when s is linearly independent when this set s is linearly independent if uh, the in the set s no vector is linear combination of the rest of the vectors in s so this is the theorem uh, then we have to uh, define the uh, dimension uh, and uh, the basis of vector space so before that we will see some more examples of uh, linearly dependent and independent so or in the uh, next topic basis so the basis topic is depend on the uh, spanning and uh, linearly dependent independent vectors or set so this this basis topic is the combination of the previous two topic that is the spanning topic and uh, the linearly dependent and independent so this is the repetition of the topic linearly dependent independent and spanning the previous two topics so we will see the next topic basis and dimension of vector space in the next lecture